Hitler was driven. Goebbels was driven. Putin's driven. You can do anything as long as you have a process and a system that you can stay present to. And driven people, we are wonderful at sabotage. And so we are constantly chasing better. Hey, Doug, welcome to the show. It is a fantastic opportunity to be here and spend some time with you. <laughs> this is great. Yeah, again, it wasn't that long ago that we were munching down on steaks in, um, uh, it wasn't Bavette, it was, uh, was it Bourbon and Bones or something like that in uh, yeah, Arizona? Bourbon and Bones with, uh, yeah, listening to uh, Chris Voss. That's right, yeah, we were hanging out with Chris Voss, Joe Polish, and Nick Peterson. It was a, a great event. In fact, we had Nick Peterson on our podcast a couple of weeks ago, so... Yeah, they're, they're a great bunch. But it was really cool to be able to spend some time with you because me and you, we've bumped into each other many times over the years but never had the chance to really converse. Um, and you're an interesting character. Here's, here's the tiny little bit about Doug Brackerman here. Navy SEAL sniper, martial artist, <laughs> businessman, uh, founder of the – and correct me if I'm saying this wrong – is it the Decian Institute? Oh, no. that Man, you found some old stuff on me. Oh, that's, wow. that's dead already. That's cool. So you, you, you were. Had, it, you had one of my first copies of my book. That's, how, that's from way back when. Actually, that was an internet search. So that tells you how you need to keep up to date on all the stuff <laughs> you're doing. Basically, you, you're, a, you're a guy that specializes in understanding the mind your driven aspect, and we're going to go into your book, yeah. Driven. Um, and also I'm going to get into talking to you about the weirdest form of meditation event that you throw. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you, you, psychology, psychology on the mind, the body, working with athletes, professional. What is driven? Let's start there. The simplest way to it, – it helps explain – Steve Sims. I mean, why are you perceived to be so different and yet so, uh, so people tend to collect around us. I mean, we are very unique and that, uh, well, simply it goes back 8,000 years ago, 9,000 years ago, this world was a very chaotic, scary place to live. saber tigers and woolly mammoths. And, um, but then the agricultural revolution turned this world into a, a very safe, simple, predictable, boring place. And most of the human species adapted to that. And they, their, their brain structures adapted, and more importantly, their reward systems adapted to that, their risk tolerance adapted to that. And our, our genetics, so 3%, Daniel Amen says 2, I say probably closer to 7, I say I'm driven probably 10, but it's really somewhere between 2 and 7% of the general population, retain the original hunter genetics and brain structure. And so one of the early authors about this that look, was looking at this, and his kid was ADD, ADHD, and he was saying there must be a good reason that these this variant of the human species is popping up so frequently. And he looked at, um, even in all species, there's a small percent of the species that are, that are waiting for a rapidly changing environment. And so we are the, we are the part of the human species that's waiting for the next ice age, just waiting for the next meteorite to hit the planet. We will figure it out and we will survive. We are designed to live in a chaotic, hard charging, difficult world. And so hunter farmer theory is what's come out of that. So it, it, it you know, what differentiates us this most is really the brain structure. So you put most people in a functional MRI, they have a nice ball of energy right here on their left prefrontal. It's called the executive function. And so they have a single thinker in their head. They have one person in their head, that is talking, no one listening. And so they, they have a very, and if you think about, you know, cultural anthropology and, and what happened with the agricultural revolution, we went from little hunter gatherer groups of maybe 15, 20, 40, 80 of us at the most into these massive societies. 
And most people's brains and bodies and the way they operate in the world adapted to become butchers and bakers and candlestick makers. They became very simple in their, you know, in their identity. And you put us in a functional MRI, you include you in that Navy SEALs and a bunch of professional athletes and entrepreneurs in particular, the back of our heads light up. And so we have this thing called occipital dominance. And what that is, it's our eyesight. That's why we or you can walk into a party and actually scan the room so quickly and things will pop out to you that other people don't see. And so we walk into a business and you look at a spreadsheet and that doesn't look right. And that um, to help us navigate this very complex world, we have something called hypofrontality, the finding feature of ADD. So rather than a little ball of energy right here, we have little dots of activity all over the frontal lobe. And so we, we can multi-think, we can track multiple targets at the same time. We can consider finance and, you know, operations and marketing and all of these things simultaneously. And, you know, we try to explain that to people with, you know, executive functions. We can't believe they don't they're like, why can't you get this? And they can't follow our tangents. So we are really, really different. Um, the reward system is the thing that first clued me in on this when I started my graduate work in 1991. Um, the dopamine system in the brain is the reward system. So it's anticipated reward. And so <clears throat> most people, 95% of people are very tolerant of very stable, predictable environments. When we are put into those stable, predictable environments, we experience something called boredom and put me in a cubicle for eight hours a day and have me do TPS reports. I'm going to put a gun in my mouth within a couple of hours because it is, it is this unbelievable angsty, impendy, doomy kind of drop in my dopamine system that really makes me, I, I do not tolerate it. And so it is a, you know, if you think about farmers, they are wired to sit around and watch shit grow really slowly. <laughs> and then when it grows and they, you know, get to harvest it, they save their harvest. They're very, very demanding that what we did last year is what we're going to do this year. They're change intolerant. They, they just live, you know, and they're well suited to living in a cubicle, waiting for their 3% raise every six months. And it's just not us. You know, and that's the running joke. You and I are both unemployable. <laughs> we are truly, we can't have, we can't have a boss. But the other interesting genetic that seems to go along with this whole constellation of personality and brain and reward is the dopamine receptor number four. And that, that's the wandering gene. And so that, that's the FOMO gene. So it is this feeling that the, there's always going to be more woolly mammoths over the next hill. And it's shiny object syndrome. It's like, oh, I can't wait. Grass is greener over there, over there, over there. What gets us in trouble? If it's going to be great over there, this sucks. And so we are constantly chasing, you know, better. And it's this constellation of personality structures, brain structures, and that, that almost killed me. And it really did with addictions and everything else. And, you know, we're different. We feel different. And internally, this, this feeling that I'm not enough gets wrapped up in most of our identities. And so I could have called the book the shame-based personality type, you know, because we are, um, you want to make us crazy is accuse us of being bad or evil without the opportunity to really explain ourselves. We lose our shit. It's like, what do you mean? It, because it triggers this deep well of feeling like I'm not enough. And maybe they know the real me. And, you know, I have two PhDs, which is completely ridiculous. I mean, that is, that is dumb, like dumb, trying to get rid of this feeling that I'm not enough or not smart enough. You know, and I, Jim Spiro, my dissertation chair, I go to shake his hand first, first time, congratulations, Dr. Brackman, my inner world, this feeling comes up and ha ha, he bought it. You know, I'm not that smart. And so that imposter syndrome, you know, trying to prove that I am this, you know, and if we're not whacked in our addictions, we wind up owning 80%, 90% of the shit in the world because it's never is enough. 
And so it, it is the big punchline to all this is there's nothing wrong with you, Mr. Sims. <laughs> Truly, you're supposed to be this way. You're born this way. It is a gift and a curse, but it is a gift overall. And so that's been my message to the world is that, you know, we're special, we're unique, we're not broken, we're not, you know, all of these, but we are different. And, you know, knowing that the rest of the world is not stupid, slow and lazy, they are just different. You know, they're, they're, they're made and it is the farmer's world. It's not our world. I'm interrupting this podcast for 35 seconds to give you more value. If you are an ambitious entrepreneur looking for the opportunity in everything you come across, don't just listen to this podcast. Imagine taking part in these conversations every week. Imagine having a new network of creative and disruptive entrepreneurs to support and push you into becoming the person you can be. With this high level and exclusive community, it exists. Head to simsdistillery.com to learn more. Now, the funny thing about what you're saying there is you're saying that we're different, but you're also saying that we're very akin to, you know, three to seven percent of, of, of people. So it's a case of there are some. This is probably why we keep on bumping into each other and probably why we keep on bumping into the same rooms as, you know, Roland Frazier, Jason Gaynard, you know, Joe Polish, Chris Foster. We, we end up finding those areas of people that are like us and we end up coming to, back to those villages where we can go, hey, it's not us, it's them. So <laughs> one of the questions I'd like to know uh, is, as a SEAL sniper, were you questioning this before becoming that sniper or was it during so, or post? Well, you, you, the yeah, you need to follow up on the research. So Randy Kelly was the, he was my Bujinkan instructor. He was my martial arts instructor and he was, opposite Chris Kyle as a Navy SEAL sniper. Oh, okay. And he helped me, he and I. So I yeah, I, I was going to go military, and then I found out what those poor people get paid. And I went, no way. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. I'm going to go get shot at for 60 grand a year. It's like, oh, hell no. But he and I, I mean, this is, this is you know, I was trying to, so you talk about my, you know, horrible internet presence, and, and it is, Really, you know, my imposter syndrome was a big part of it. But he and I, you know, I've been a long time, long range competitive shooter. I compete 600 yards and 1,000 yards, you know, big, big guns. And he and I were sitting around, you know, bullshitting one day. And it's like, you know, I'm trying to rebrand myself, trying to get away from being a psychologist, you know, touchy feely guy. Um, and I said, you know, well, what happens if we pair meditation with long range shooting? Yeah. And he went, yeah, you got it. And so he's a fourth degree black belt in, uh, or sixth degree, sorry, Randy, um, in Bujinkan. And he'd go back to Japan. And so he's really into this stuff. And, and we just came up with this, this wild way of actually understanding how the human brain body work together. And in particular, sabotage. And driven people, we are wonderful at sabotage, and we are designed for sabotage, meaning that we, we can create the most amazing companies, get the money all there, get your whole life together, and then we have the fuck it button where you just blow it up. And why is that? What is, what's going on? My doctoral dissertation was about it, and why does January suck at the gym is because one part of the the operating system, the monkey mind has got a, you know, a monkey up there that thinks it can get six pack abs at 56 years old. But then my, the, the body and the, this thing can imagine great worlds and, and fantastic opportunities to make a ton of money. This thing wants a familiar world. And so lottery winners are the greatest example of that. You know, three years, five years after winning the lottery, it is the worst thing to happen to 87% of people. Because, you know, I've seen it tens of times, you know, entrepreneur has a nice exit, 40, $50 million exit. Like, wow, I never have to work again. Six years later, it's like, what the hell happened? I got 4 million bucks back and a bunch of pissed off people around me because like what happened? And so it is this ability to actually catch that and see the difference between these is, is really the core 
tenant of making this horrible thing of being driven, you know, being an outcast and being different and into the greatest gift ever. Because we have unbelievably special skills of, of hyper focus, of really being able to multi think and solve problems that other people are just baffled by. But being able to catch your sabotage. So the simplest way to say that the, the gift of that shooting meditation is really the flinch. And so you go to shoot a gun and I shoot, we have some really big guns. I got a, it's bigger than a 50 cal. It's called a 375 chai tech, which is massive, like cannons. Um, but this capacity to hit a target at a thousand yards, relatively, you know, first shot, wow, I got it. Second shot, bing, you got it again. That third shot, the the desire to hit the target, particularly for driven people, becomes overwhelming. And you get completely obsessed with the results. And you lose the process. And so meditation is really about catching this other operating system. And you go to anticipate pulling the trigger on one of these massive guns, your, your body tenses. It's anticipating a future event. It's not being in the present. And so there is no recoil in the present. And so the more you can take this, this hyper-focused gift of, of being driven into the present, and it's a, the greatest flow hack you've ever had, because then you can do anything as long as you have a process and a system that you can stay present to. And that sabotage melts away. And you forget about the results. You just stay in the present. And I mean, I've, I've seen, there's a story in Driven about a, a, a woman that uh, she was an Olympic snowboarder, badass. And she went her turn at the gun and we we're you know shooting five rounds. And she coming back, from the shoot hit it four out of five times. And she, as she was getting back to her cushions to meditate 20, he was 22 year veteran, Navy SEAL sniper, badass dude. I mean, he knew, and she, she puts up four fingers to him and pumps her fist like this. And he went, fuck, <laughs> cause it's no joke to hit it. He promptly got up to the gun, missed it the first shot and hit it, hit it, hit it. And that, Fifth shot, he was so hell bent, he had to hit and it had to be as good as her. His body, it was impossible for him to become present to it. And so that capacity to really see how that's called ego, and this I am the result rather than staying in the present, um, is where driven people just blow it up. And it, it, it's a it's, it's, I mean, it, it's a very powerful experience. It's a blast. You need to come do it. Yeah, I got told about it, and I know you were talking about a uh, uh, mutual friend, Jason Gaynard, getting involved. Um, and then I obviously we were hanging out, having having dinner and stuff. And I started looking this up. The, the whole correlation between shooting a rifle and meditation. At first, I did not see the connection, but then as you're speaking about being married to the result rather than the process. Um, that does become a lot more. And yes, I would. When is your next one? Let's give it a shallow plug. When is the next one? I've got a couple dates coming up in, yeah, like three weeks and then another one in uh, October. So I run them September, October, November um, in Ohio and we shoot out to a mile. And so, shoot out to a mile. a mile. Yeah, we start at 300 and 600 and then 900 and then everyone wants to shoot a thousand and then i got it there's a my favorite target in the united states is a one mile ipsy target so it's a standard size body target you can't see it with the naked eye and it, it, yeah and it, it's uh, about a, a 42 foot drop in elevation the bullet is going up 42 feet and then down and then a good crosswind is crosswinding anywhere from 8 to 15 feet and so you're basically lobbing these things in there. And I've gone, I've seen multiple people go three for three at a mile. And it is your, your monkey mind cannot believe you can do it. You well, can't. We know, we've already discovered that you're, you're crap with the internet, but where would people actually go to actually find out the details <laughs> of, of this event? 
<laughs> so talking about Jason Gagnard. So my story in 2017, 16, somewhere in there, um, I had Jason and Clay he Bear came to one of my meditation shoots. Yeah. And they were sitting around at the hippie circle at the end talking about the emotion and the feelings. And I can't believe I did it. And people crying about how amazing it is. Um, and they're waiting for the mastermind pitch at the end and come work with me pitch and all that. And I got crickets, man. I didn't even have a web page. <laughs> and so it was, it, it's, <clears throat> I'm finally being drug. And that's why I'm doing these podcasts now. I'm being drug out of the corners. And I was working with a bunch of pro golfers and I've had a bunch of pro golfers behind guns. And um, yeah, it, it, it typically takes three strokes off your uh, putting. You know, you go from a 25 to a 22 putter around. It, it's, it's, yeah, it, uh, <clears throat> there, it's a hitch in golf. It's called where you're anticipating the result rather than just allowing the body to. And I, so, but I've been drug out of the closet now and I'm, I'm, it, everything. What's the site? Me, what is it? Is it, I am driven? Is that the, I is that the web? Driven, I am driven.com. And I've got a couple right. things going right now. Something I'm really excited about is I'm really trying to crack down on what it means to be driven. So I hear this, oh, it's just a rebrand of ADD. Uh huh, it is. But what's ADD? Well, it's a list of symptoms. It really doesn't really get to the core of what is it, you know, and the executive function and the, the really the personality types, because not all. And I talk about it in Driven, you know, we have Navy SEALs that are both, you know, snipers, call them sneaky SEALs. And they're, you know, they're much more D4. They're much more about, you know, horizoning and looking at the long term. And then we got door kickers. And you see that in entrepreneurs all over the place. You got the smash and grab guys, you know, selling dick pills on the Internet and making the money quick. And then you got the long term, you know, guys that are in the grind. Um and then we have left hemisphere driven, which are your, you know, integrators, implementers. And then you have your right hemisphere driven, which are visionaries. And so I'm really cracking down into this, you know, trying to come up with a, a real model for what we are and how we, how we work better together. Um, and so you come to my website, I am driven.com and I, I've got an assessment on there. It's a 50 question assessment because of the imposter syndrome I have. I, it's a real assessment. You know, I have a PhD in psychology and, and I, I sent it out to a national norming agency and looked at all the stats. And so it's a, it's a real assessment. Um, and it, it has the national average on there, you know, what, what it looks like to be normal. And most people are so <laughs> different than that, but it shows you the 10 different categories that we typically vary on. And then I'm calling it a driven lab where I'm going to, integrate the Myers-Briggs and your Colby and your IQ and all of those things in to create a, a basic dashboard for what it looks like to be you and how you compare to other entrepreneurs and, and how, how we work well together in some circumstances and do we mix oil and water and others, you know, and you, you Is see that. that help us? Is that going to help us with the fuck it button that you talk, talked about <laughs> when we know, because the first thing about an entrepreneur to really, excel is to first of all look inside and see you know yeah. what damage they're carrying because a lot of us a lot of us entrepreneurs you know we, we're we we're weird fuck-ups of, of people um we, going we about, are, about life and it, it is <clears throat> well that's that's classic behind the gun and so you know left hemisphere driven right hemisphere driven I don't know, that's carl young and just at handedness is, you know, people are tend to be right-handed versus left-handed. Doesn't mean you can't use the other, mm -hmm. but right hemisphere driven, which is the emotional driven, we have the fuck it button where what we get, when we get to a certain point of frustration, fuck it and blow it up and screw it and blah, blah, where left hemisphere driven struggle tremendously with analysis paralysis. And so they, you know, when you get stressed, they think and 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 they're scared to pull the trigger. And so you see these differences and that is, you know, very insightful. If you're a left hemisphere driven and you're overthinking something, what do you need to do? Come into yeah. the feeling realms. And if you're about to press the bucket button, think, think, think. <laughs> so that capacity though to catch it is called emotional intelligence. 
and that 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 is the core of what I, all of this the once a driven masters and mastery you never get it perfect but you you start to figure out the emotional impulses that are coming before the action you know that's my joke of an emotion has never gotten me in trouble you take the e off and turn that shit into motion big trouble mm-hmm. and so it's all that pause and in that pause is where the magic happens and so it, it's but driven we are we are really important to the world you know so I, i've got another book coming out um and I, I go back to second, third grade. I didn't, I didn't understand why the rest of the class didn't see how stupid the homework was. Like, why? What are we? What are we doing here? It's a waste of time memorizing like states and shit. Well, who cares? Um, everyone else in the group seemed to just be going along with the narrative. You know, school is good, and you get an A. And you know, Joe Rogan is a great example of it. You know, like why? can't people see what they're doing with Kamala Harris? I mean, six months ago, they hated her. Now they're pitching a narrative that she's the greatest thing in the world. And why, why can't they see it? And most people, 65, 67% of people on this planet have a single, single monkey in their head. They have this single thinker in their head and they're, they are hell bent on keeping the narrative, their truth. They don't have this insight. They can't step out, multi-think, and go, well, maybe that's not right. You know, and that's, that's the other, you know, we are human bullshit detectors. We see right through people's narratives. And so, you know, the next book is really a, a looking, well, Driven was much more about how it's a blessing and a curse to you. And this next book is how it's a blessing and a curse to the world. I mean, and, you know, Hitler was driven. And Goebbels was driven, you know, Putin's driven. And these guys are, you know, a lot of Washington is driven. These guys are addicted to power and addicted to money and addicted to, you know, manipulating. Fauci's driven, clearly. But what's the narrative we can pitch to the public so they take the shot and I can make 79 bucks a shot? It's like, you know, but we are actually, you know, the ones who are going to actually just stop it and change it. So I think we're, I think it is a real call to action, you know, that, that those of us that can see the truth, that, you know, we say something. So look, you've got your website, IamDriven.com. You've got the assessment on there. You've got the book on there so you can grab the book. How long do you think before the next book's coming out? It's in edit. Um, yeah, I can analysis paralysis the crap out of it. So it's in the works. It's been, but it's, it is cover to cover written, which is the hardest part. Now I'm just moving paragraphs. What's it called? It is sheep, wolves, sheep dogs, and the shepherd. All right. So you heard it first here. This is coming up. You got, I take it. You're going you're to put a link on it. Now, obviously, you've got to get uh, your ass and gear regarding your internet presence, but you know, you're going to put a link on there probably on the I Am Driven website as well, correct? Correct. Yeah. And I've, I've yeah. literally just hired, I've got, I got four people on my team now. So it, it's happening. Good, it's good, happening. good. Doug, you're always a play. The thing about you is there's always kind of like finding different little things that are going on. So I'm looking forward to our next uh, Bourbon and Bones. And a big shout out to Bourbon and Bones. It's my favorite steakhouse whenever I'm over in uh, Scottsdale. But um, looking forward to having a drink and a chat with you again in the future, pal. I appreciate it. Appreciate your time, brother. Thanks for being on. See you soon. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. You know what to do. If you love it, share, subscribe. But more than anything, do something with it. And remember, life's too short to play it safe. So disrupt, connect, and grow. See you next time.